again. Glad to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about circular orbits. We live in a world where there's a lot of things going on in Earth orbit, lots of interesting satellites, lots of things that make our lives better in orbit around the Earth. It would be good to understand a little bit about how that works. Now, orbits are elliptical. You know, Johannes Kepler figured that out a long time ago, and he did it using just empirical information and curve fits. Isaac Newton came along and proved it to be true mathematically. Um, circular orbits are the simplest case of an ellipse. An ellipse has a long and a short axis, a semi-major and a semi-minor axis. A circle is just a an ellipse where the semi-major and semi-minor axis are the same. All right, so I've got Earth here. This is, this is my little model of Earth, and I've got, I don't know what that is. Let's say that's the space station, maybe, orbiting the Earth. Now, we need to know a couple of things, and there's, a, there's one equation that, that uh, describes what's going on. And it turns out if we know the diameter of the Earth and the acceleration of gravity at the surface of the Earth, we'll have enough information to get where we need to go. So uh, we've got the diameter of the Earth. The Earth is 12,742 kilometers in diameter, pretty much. Now, it, it, the Earth is not exactly a sphere. It's a little bit off of spherical, but for our, our purposes, that's a good enough number. So it means the radius is 6,371 kilometers. Now, we need an orbital height here. Well, low Earth orbit, which is the lowest orbit you can get to and be above the atmosphere. That's where most of the stuff is. That's where the shuttles used to go. That's where the space station is now. Is about 400 kilometers up. And I looked this up. The, uh, the space station is in a very slightly elliptical orbit that varies between, I don't know, 410 and something kilometers up. So I'm going to use 400 kilometers. That's about the right answer. And so we've got all this, this stuff here is given. Well, we don't really have a problem unless we have a fine statement. So let's find the orbital velocity. Okay? What velocity is, is required to stay in that orbit? Now, here's the way we do this. Right solution there. Now, when you're in orbit, you, you're experiencing centrifugal acceleration. You're accelerating towards the center of the Earth. When the acceleration towards the center of the Earth equals the pull of gravity in that direction, you're in orbit. You, you feel weightless. You're falling basically at the same rate uh, gravity is trying to draw you down. And uh, the problem is gravity is a function of the, the force of gravity is a function of how far you are away from the center of the Earth. And here's the governing expression. This is uh, one of the expressions Newton developed. Okay. So the force applied or force between two massive bodies, like maybe me and the Earth, is g m1 m2 over r squared. Now this g is a capital G. That's called the universal gravitational constant. This is very different from 9.81. In case you're wondering, g is 6. Uh, 674 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram second. All right? Really funny units, but that's what it is. And this is universal. This is the same everywhere. As far as we can tell, this is a universal constant like pi or the speed of light or something like that. It doesn't matter where you are. That's what it is. Now, it turns out, if we're clever about this, we don't actually need that number. I'm putting it up there just so you know what it is. If we decide to go this way, just blindly plug into the equation, we need to know the mass of the Earth. Well, I don't know the mass of the Earth. I can go look it up, but that's an odd number to need. Here's how we're going to do this. If I say mass 1 is the Earth and mass 2 is me, okay, I can do that, I'm going to divide F by m2, and I'm going to do this, f over m2, that's the force between me and the earth, divided by my mass, equals g m1 r squared, all right? Force divided by mass, that sounds familiar. That's the acceleration of gravity, little g, and that equals 9.81 meters per second. Ah, can't write to the tonight. Meter second squared. All right? So I don't know what m1 is, but I don't need to know what m1 is. I only need to know the product of g and m1. So I'm going to go one step further here, and I'm going to say that uh, g m1 equals little g times the radius of the earth squared. Now if I figure that number out, it comes out to be 3.98 times 10 to the 14th meters cubed per 
second squared. Now that looks like the goofiest units ever, but trust me, it works out. So I started with this, this uh, Newton's uh, gravitational expression here. Started to get into a form I can use, and I finally got this, this thing, this funny GM1. I've got that product. I found an actual number for that. Now that I know that, I'm going to go back into this expression. All right. And let's see. Let's, let's erase this. Okay. Now I'm going to do this exact same thing again. I'm going to write G equals G m1 over r squared. But now, instead of r being the distance from the center of the Earth to me, which was the radius of the Earth, I'm going to add 400 kilometers to that to make up for the fact that their space station is in orbit 400 kilometers above the uh, uh, surface of the Earth. So I'm going to get gm1 radius of the Earth plus h squared, where h is 400 kilometers. All right. So if you plug all those numbers in, you're going to get an acceleration of 8.682 meters per second squared. And those, of course, are the right units. Now that's noticeably less than the 9.81 meters per second squared we see at the surface of the Earth, even though we're only 400 kilometers away. That 1 over r squared term really builds up quickly. All right, so now that we've got that, Next thing we're going to do is say, let's see, the acceler centrifugal acceleration equals V squared over R. All right. Well, that's going to be the centrifugal acceleration. So what I can do now is I can say V equals the square root of the centrifugal acceleration times R. Okay. That has to be the centrifugal acceleration. The R is now R of the Earth plus the height above the Earth. Okay. Figure that out. And what you get is 7667, pretty much, 0.3, I guess, meters per second. Now, just to, ch to, to do a sanity check on this, I went online and looked up what is the actual orbital speed of the space station. Now, it varies a little bit because the altitude above the Earth varies just a little bit. But they, they listed a mean... Uh, speed of about 6,700, I'm sorry, 7,700 meters per second. So I got about the right answer there. One last thing, let's put this in context, 7667. Okay, that's 7.667 kilometers per second. Is that fast? You bet that's fast. The speed of sound at sea level is 343 meters a second. So this is close to 20 times the speed of sound, right? Pretty big number. So there you have it. It's easy to figure out uh, the speed uh, the orbital velocity if you're in a circular orbit. You're just trying to find the velocity at which the centrifugal acceleration equals the local gravitational acceleration. Works on any planet. Don't have to be on Earth. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.